So let me um, let me move with. Um, I think we'll have a quick night tonight, but let me move on with uh, the LA, um, the U.S. riots. This um, the idea that it's a black black thing. Um, and it's only black people being um, being hurt or being murdered or being injured by flying blue bullets or uh, you know blue uniforms. It's kind of like like a one-sided narrative of the whole idea um, because we we know that Hispanics, um, Asian people, and also white people, white men or European men have been murdered by the police before. But it's never usually put out there because it's the same thing when it's like when a um, when a black child goes missing, it doesn't worry the papers. But if a white person, white child goes missing, blue, blonde hair, blue eyes, it's on every sort of paper and it's in every sort of media. And the last six years, um, they've been. What I've noticed is because I had to go back and have a look at how things were happening over in the U.S. Um, that the there have been people who've been like festering and festering this narrative that um that only one type of life matters and one type of color matters and so when whenever um one thing about like um the news it's always a narrative and that's why i call my um you know youtube channel the narrative because it's my narrative when I'm sitting here, it's my narrative. It's my viewpoint, it's my thing, but I open it up because I understand that I, I'm a learner. But it's, I still call it the narrative because I'm a writer, so I know what the narrative of where I'm going with my stories, and that's how I decided to do that. One thing um, a lot of people don't realize is there are actually people that were actually in the city, that have been watching this over the last couple of days, and uh, where there have been outside people from outside the community dropping off pallets of bricks, like pallets of bricks, on the way, uh, like just before the right um, protesters are coming, and they and there's black men going, where these come from? There's no construction here. Where are these from? And I saw a um, broadcast from uh, Minneapolis from a police um, captain. He said, we've we've already said 40 people, and they're not from anyone in our community. And one of the things about um, riots, I've been in a couple that almost blew up, uh, like a couple of hundred kids in the middle of them. And um, and one of the things I noticed was that if you grab hold of the weak person and pull them aside, the strong will will have to step back and go, I you know, I think I'm in the wrong here. And one thing, um, there was, you know, it took them four days to arrest this guy who, you know, who killed this this um, black man. Um, and there were three others there who, you know, were part of it. And they still, I think, um, up till today, hadn't arrested the other three. Yet there was this other thing where there was um, a guy who was defending his, um, his store from looters. He was arrested right away. But the police weren't arrested right away. They still four days later took them to arrest, and because it took them four days to do that, it made people angrier. I mean, we here, uh, everybody. I mean, like friends here in New Zealand are going, meme, 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 left, right, and centre, and um, like there's uh, Facebook groups. They're talking about it here, and I'm thinking, you know, we've just tried to give our police officers here more, more, uh, more, you know, more laws you know, more new bills to um, come into our homes without any, you know, um, any um, any sort of a warrants and stuff. And they go, well, that's because they never had to have warrants to come onto your doorstep anyway. Yeah, but you could still say, uh, what are you here for? No, you're not getting in my house. Now you can go in my house. So I'm not going to, I can't stop you. And so it's weird to people bounce around and, uh, I mean, not bounce around, sorry, to say, hey, look at what's happening over there. But then we turn around and go, hey, our officers need more laws. And we go, um, doesn't that seem a bit weird to go, well, if you give this much power to a uniform, 
don't you think they might take that power a bit further? And this is always my concern is whenever you um, change law, somebody's always going to come and try to change the law a bit further. What else can they do with it? Um, okay, so you're going to say I can have warrantless. Wait, then I can come and seize a property now. And of course, they did that last year with the guns. They go, well, if we'll buy it back off you. If we don't, I want to seize it off you. All right. But then also they, um, the other side of this thing about looting and all that, I mean, you know, the, people have the right to protest. And there's nothing wrong with it. I've been protesting as well many times, um, even here in Fungare, you know, um, um, you know, protesters against like a building falling, you know, there was um, at the North Tech Cup in the 90s, which could um, hurt the drama students because it was falling apart and they still had to perform as students in their building. And we'd have a sit and go, no, no, peaceful protest. Nobody was throwing bricks. But the other thing about those things is it's, it harms their own communities, the rioting. It, it's, this is the weird thing about um, the looting and the burning. It's, you've gone from saying, okay, I'm, I'm angry, I'm angry, and not directing at the police stations and the police to directing at the community and going, you know, a lot of black business owners have lost their businesses and communities had their buildings burned down. and you know, having a look at over this and I'm going, you know, if that happened in Whangarei, how many of our friends would lose their businesses? And how many of them could never build back again? You know, and that sort of thing. So there is, there's anger, there's rage, there's grievances, but it's, it's been, it's been stoked for a couple of years now by the media who's just reported one side of it. And not only that, I've watched white men being, um, being, run through the um, chase through the streets of Portland in daytime with baseball bats and going up to the police station going let me in let me in and the police then going no we're not we're not letting you in it's like what do you mean you're the police no we're not we're not letting you in. but they're chasing people for doing absolutely nothing this is daytime Portland you know and you and I'm thinking well so you're the police and this is like just last year right just last year but the other thing of, of this is that these same police officers were giving out tickets and citations as well a couple of weeks ago during the lockdown and um by giving out uh, and basically people were snitching on each other and stuff and getting um you know arrested for d social distancing but nobody's worried about social distancing now nobody nobody over there is worrying about that now because everybody's rioting and stuff um and burning down their own cities. And that's the thing about it. It's like their own cities, the business that they could they'll be working in tomorrow, you know, when they go back. Um, but the other side of that is like, I mean, I've listened to a lot of black men on talk about these things on on you know on on YouTube and I've been following them for about a whole year thinking what what they think about all these race things that are happening in America. And a lot of them they don't they don't have these grievances as they everybody keeps talking about. Um, you know, listening to police officers, listening to people who have actually, uh, you know, musicians and artists, and they basically they talk about how you know you got to take your you got to take the ball by your hands and you got to get out there and create something for yourself and stop blaming this and blaming that and blaming that. I mean, it's been the same thing with me when I started listening to these guys. Are like. I can't blame my pain. I can't blame my injuries. I can't blame this. I can't blame I got to do that anymore. All right. I got to start getting in there and doing it myself. And I watch these guys and I'm thinking, well, then why do so many people believe this out there? Why do so many people believe that this is what's happening? And because there's a part of the um, the um, the community that's always saying. It's not, it's everybody else's fault but yours. And, um, you know, and it's always everybody else's fault but yours. And I, I remember Nipsey, Nipsey um, Hustle, a, a very famous a black man who was shot by a jealous black man in his own community outside his own business last year. And um, he opened up his store and he was going to, you know, he was, said, you know, did well. 
came back to his community, so I'm going to open up and help my own community. I'm going to employ these people in my own community. And his own community killed him. And there was no riot. His own community killed him. There was no riot. Right? A guy from his own community killed him. There was no riot. Yet, there was only around about, I think about a, a couple hundred people that were mourning him. And people, and actual peop um, people online were saying, you know, that's a sad loss to us. And within weeks, they were over it. And, and the idea that this is someone who actually worked his way out, um, and as a, as a rapper from a child, from going through all the hustle of all that, uh, you know, as the name says, hustle, Nipsey Hustle, you know, hustled his way to, to where he was, and his own community killed him. But, but the narrative is it's only the white man kills the black man, right? And as long as you, as long as everybody keep perpetuating that narrative, you always will have people blaming somebody else for their problems. But the same, you know, the guys were saying, the police officers were saying, but every other week in Chicago, there's a hundred black men killed by hundred by other black men in the community. But we don't hear about it all across America, right? that black people are getting killed by black people, black males are dying. And nobody talks about these young, prominent young black men who are studying their lives hard out, going, trying to, as we we're talking about scholarships and stuff, going to basketball, going to music, going to arts, getting all these ready to go to scholarships. There was one person who was actually killed who was on his way to getting scholarship, you know, just got on the scholarship. And he, and they're saying that, well, it doesn't matter if you're killed by your own community. It only matters if somebody else kills you. And the thing was, the reason I raised that is because I remember in 2014, my, um, my uncle was stabbed in the neck by a, by a seven year old and a 12 year old who were after some lollies. Our community didn't raise up against the other community and go, you know what? Out of our grief, we're going to burn down our city. You know, we're going to get angry now because you kill one of our prominent people. And I think this is the uh, idea that when we start perpetuating blindly to a belief system that, you know, we're not responsible for our own actions and we take on board and that when you're on the street, nobody cares what color you are. Uh, it's us and them when it comes down to it. No, sorry, not what color you are. When, it, when you're on the streets, nobody cares about your politics. You know, nobody cares about your ideals how much you care about them or how much they care about you. They just see you as them and us. And it's, and it's the weird thing because I think um, as much as grief you can have, you can, you can, when you start hurting your own community and, um, and your own businesses, that's when it sort of kind of goes, how far is too far is when I always think about it. It's like, how far do I carry this anger? You know, how far does anybody has a right to carry any anger? But we know, you know, police have killed people in the past. We've had our injustice here in New Zealand. I mean, even the courts, um, our unjust, you know, in our courts here, um, they've let off people. You know, we had someone who ran down um, a young boy and um, was set free. We had somebody else who was driving a couple, um, two years ago because they were American tourists, because their father was very rich. No bail, out of here. Never brought to justice. And so we know there's injustices all the time. And it, But I think when we start um, using, I mean, not using, sorry, looking at other places and thinking, you know, how do we um, negate that to happening here? I think w we just need to start um, listening to people who actually are actually having the dialogue and questioning things, you know, like we're doing. We're questioning how, how does this happen? Why do these people do these things? And I mean, I was angry as soon as I heard it. Oh, another, another black man killed another black, another white man, <laughs> you know? another white cop, I should say, another cop, you know. And, you know, because it happens all the time. And it's not because it only happens to black people. It happens to white people. And, and um, you know, and the other thing is 
a lot of people don't realize that the Asians were getting beaten in the streets during the coronavirus in America. And black people were recording them doing themselves doing that and putting it online, you know, but it wasn't sort of broadcast so much because there was black people doing it. And that's the thing about this, this whole idea of, um, you know, because you, racism can't, I mean, I've run into questions where I thought, you know, is this racism? And is this person a, person a racist towards me? Is their viewpoint racist towards me? And then you realize, well, it's not actually racist. It's actually he's a bigot or he's a belligerent person or he's just an a-hole, you know? And I we, you know, I, I think the only reason we we tend to jump to race is because when there's colors involved, you know, it's, it's easier to jump onto race when um, an ethnicity, whenever it's different from the other, and it's us and them. So if you like, say, if, if there was an Asian guy uh, from Japan there, oh, let's make it let's make it really close. Let's say there's a Sri Lankan there uh, from Ceylon and um, and there is a North um, North Indian who's a lighter skin. It's us and them, very quickly. You know, it's it's and that's because not because they might be worshiping the same god or something, or different gods. It's because we see the difference straight away, and the, and because we can see the difference straight away, it worries me that we haven't come that far. If we can be so easily divided within those lines, we really haven't in those fifty years we're talking about. We really haven't come so far if we still can't see past the differences. And, and you know, I mean, I can see myself in the face and I go, yeah, it's brown. But I look at around my room, it's like, there's nothing in here Indian apart from, actually, that's actually gone as well. There's nothing in this house, you know, this apartment that's actually, would anybody walk and go, that guy's Indian, you know? And I think that's, um, it, it's kind of, we really haven't come far in those 50 years since that last, um, was it 1960? When, when did we go to the moon last? 